Hey everybody, it's Lisa, and I'm here today and I'm going to show you a very simple um, design technique um, called stenciling. Um, it's becoming a lot more popular. It used to be just reserved for your walls back in the 1970s and the 80s, but it's become really popular, especially with paper crafters and multimedia crafters. So here I have the supplies that I'm going to use today. The first thing that I have done is what I'm doing is I am altering a cigar box, a wooden cigar box. So the first thing I did was to disassemble the box and to paint it the base color that I wanted it. I painted this um, in agave by Waverly. Um, it's a chalk paint that you can get at Walmart in the paint section and it's really good. There's no prep involved. Um, it dries. All the colors are true to what the bottle shows. It's just I really like working with it a lot. So the first thing I have done is painted and allowed that to dry. You need to work on a smooth dry surface whenever you're stenciling. This Here is the stencil that I'm going to use today. And what I have done is I have run my ATG gun along the edges of the stencil so that I can adhere it to the top of the box and get a true stencil with no gaps or anything like that so I don't have any mess ups whenever I'm doing the stencil. So I'm just going to apply the stencil and press down where I have the tape. One of the reasons why I like using the ATG gun um, as opposed to scotch tape is scotch tape sometimes tends to peel the paint off. And then also, it's repositionable. You don't have to worry about it having to replace the same piece of tape. And then whenever you take it off, you can just rub your fingers over the tape strips and they come right off. I'm sure most of you have done that with other things. Here are the different types of tools that you could use to stencil. Um, here we have a spouncer foam brush, a piece of sponge. You can use a regular household sponge. This is actually a sponge from the car washing section that I cut up into little pieces. You can use a foam dauber and you can use a paintbrush. The least favorite of mine is the paintbrush because unless you have a really good tight adhes adhesion for your stencil to your surface, then you could end up getting mess ups where the brush will you know, like when you're trying to get in all the little crevices and corners, the brush will go up under the stencil. So the brush is my least favorite option. The sponge and the sponge dauber both work really good if you're stenciling with ink. Um, today, I'm going to be stenciling with acrylic paint. So I'm going to use the Spouncer Pouncing Foam Brush. I have my paint here. And what I'm using is I'm using the Folk Arts in Antique Copper. I wanted a real contrast. I wanted to give this piece something like a Moroccan look. And so I like the way the really bright colors pair with the dark metallics. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foam brush. And I put a little bit of paint in a bowl so I could, after I load my brush, I can kind of smooth it out a little bit so I get a, an even coat of what I'm doing. And so just do that a couple of times. Normally I would use my palette paper, but I'm out and I didn't have time to get any before doing this video. So what you do is you just start patting and just pat, go around in circles. And that way you can make sure you get everything very even. You can see, cover it really well. You don't have to worry about ruining your stencil. Most paints and inks will wash right off of it. So you apply a little bit more and you continue to just kind of go around in short, quick motions. You don't want to do anything to get the corners um, or edges of your brush up into the underneath the stencil so you can get a good, clean design. You can cover them heavily or you can kind of leave some like this so you don't, you know, you can have sort of a more vintage or a more antique look. I'm going to cover this, since this is such a bold color, I'm just going to go ahead and cover these completely and not do any fading or anything like that. So using my paint, just keep pouncing away. Pounce, 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 pounce. Almost done. You can go back and do a little bit harder in the areas where you see that you've got some bare spots. So you can use up all your product, not waste any paint, anything like that. Continue just to let it 
pounce it in and you can see that I'm using up all the paint and getting a really good coat there. Okay, so that's done. So now, since I didn't use a really heavy application of paint, I'm gonna go ahead and take the stencil off. And this is what we have. Just put this over to the side. This is not where the paint came up. This is just part of the paint that's on the stencil so it'll just rub right off, see? So I'll take care of that. So as you can see, we have a really nice stencil piece here. The edges are really clean. Now what I'm gonna show you in the next video is how to cover the entire um, piece like this when one stencil is not quite enough. Um, you can measure. I like to wait for this to dry to the touch and then line up the last rows and then just go from there. It's a little bit more work, but you get exact measurements every time. So I appreciate you watching. Um, please tune in. I'll be making some more videos. I'm going to start with some simple stuff and then move up to flower making and some jewelry stamping and things like that. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye-bye.